right, good evening, everyone. I really want to thank the organizers for including me. This is an epic conference. You guys go 7 a.m., 7 p.m., ski in the middle. I love it. Um, but seriously, I've learned so much from my urology colleagues and radiation colleagues. Um, and I'll be telling you a bit about my approach to metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. These are some of my uh, conflicts of interest. So a very oversimplified mantra, doublet for most, triplet for some, don't forget radiation, and more options to come. So we have a lot of clinical trials with these androgen receptor pathway inhibitors showing significant, significant benefits in terms of progression-free survival and overall survival for patients with metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer. Triplets are a little bit more controversial. We don't have an answer as to what does the docetaxel add, because the triplets were done with the doublet base of ADT docetaxel, and we know that we still get benefit from the AR pathway inhibitor. So in fact, on the NCCN panel, we stepped down ADT docetaxel as an option. Um, so there are lots of ongoing triplet trials, and I feel very comfortable and ethical in rolling on them because I don't think docetaxel is the end-all be-all when it comes to triplets, and we need more options. Um, so as we've heard so much about uh, today, ADT is tough, AR pathway inhibitors have toxicities too. I feel like I'm, I'm giving poison. They're actually pretty well tolerated, but it is super important to start by looking at the patient in front of you. What are their comorbidities? What's their life expectancy? What are their concomitant medications? And make the most rational choice for this individual and not just kind of have a one-size-fits-all approach. Um, Radiation for the prostate for de novo low volume is something to consider. I'm not going to say it's 100% mandatory for everyone. Um, and one of the really exciting things is the potential for biomarkers to start helping us um, move the field forward. So here's a summary of some of the doublet trials. Um, you know about these trials. I'm not going to go into all of them. I'll just highlight Aeronote, which was the newest. It was um, presented at ESMO last year with ADT with or without darolutamide. So Aerosense had everyone getting docetaxel, right? That's one of our triplet trials. Um, but this showed that, not unexpectedly, darolutamide significantly prolonged. RPFS, the survival data weren't quite mature yet, but anticipate they'll be positive like all the other trials. One nice thing, so this was done XUS because it had to be done in places without access to AR pathway inhibitors. And because of that, we actually got some diversity in the accrual. Most of these other trials have really suffered from lack of diversity. So there were 10% black patients and 30% Asian. And that's really important because those are some of the people we're seeing in our clinics. I also want to point out that in Enzymet, the control arm could get an older generation AR antagonist like bicalutamide. So sometimes you hear arguments, why are we using these expensive, fancy drugs like enzalutamide when we have bicalutamide? This was essentially head-to-head, -head, and this was significantly in favor of the enzalutamide. So we cannot be giving our patients bicalutamide and thinking we're doing doublet. It's simply not as good a drug as this newer generation of AR pathway inhibitors. So why do we need triplet if these doublets are so great? Well, even these very powerful agents, only about half of patients achieve a PSA nadir less than 0.2 by about six months. And this is a finding that's been shown consistently in all of those doublet trials to be significantly associated with better survival versus worse. And when you look at these survival curves, there are some patients dying within a year or two of diagnosis, which is a tragedy, right? We anticipate most of them to have a life expectancy of at least five to six years. So we clearly need to do something more. And also, I would argue, we haven't cured anyone yet with our existing doublets and triplets, so there's room to improve. We've heard a lot, again, about toxicity, and we don't want to keep patients on ADT forever. That's our current standard. But until we get the kind of deeper missions that would allow us to take treatment holidays, um, we need to keep doing our research efforts. So as I alluded to, Aerosense was the triplet trial with ADT docetaxel with or without darolutamide. So many of us that I talk to, my prostate cancer colleagues, we use a triplet very selectively because, again, we can't say how much did the docetaxel add. We can say what it subtracts, right? So the toxicity is febrile neutropenia, less than 8%, death due to AE, 4%. Um, so use those data as you may when you're counseling a patient about what are the risks of docetaxel. It's a pretty safe chemo. We use it in thousands and thousands of patients. Um, but there is some risk, and I think that's an important part of the conversation. 
That being said, systemic meta-analysis of all these doublet and triplet trials indicates that the greatest benefit is with triplets. Now that is primarily associated with patients with high volume, and so many of us are using triplets for those patients that we just know that this is bad disease or we feel like it may not be as AR driven, but we need better, higher level of evidence for sure. Piece one is the other trial that's considered a triplet trial, but it's really a complicated trial. It started out asking the question of whether radiation of the prostate primary in de novo metastatic disease was still beneficial when you intensified systemic therapy with abiraterone. So it was a two by two factorial. But then, ethically, the trial had to be updated to allow docetaxel after Chart had reported out. And so there's like six different options. So this is a very difficult trial to interpret. Best we can say is that the abiraterone and the radiation don't mutually exclude benefit from each other, um, but I think we need a little bit more data still. Um, so that trial was really launched in reaction to the initial finding from the Stampede trial uh, where they had patients getting hormone therapy alone, just uh, LHRH, right, alone or with radiation of the prostate primary and found an advantage, but the advantage seemed to be limited to patients with low volume disease. Um, and the criticism was, but they weren't getting optimal systemic therapy, they weren't getting doublets, and so that's why piece one was created um, to sort of try to answer the question. Um, so I would say we need more data, and there is a trial, SWOG S1802, that is still actively accruing at a center near you. Metastatic hormone sensitive prostate cancer patients getting any kind of doublet or triplet, and they're primarily interested in cytoreductive prostatectomy, so 50-50 um, randomization, or for patients who really would prefer radiation, they can uh, be randomized yes, no for radiation of the prostate primary. So we'll learn a lot more about how the radiation interacts with all of our spectrum of doublets and triplets, uh, so I encourage people to support that trial. But of course, wouldn't it be nice if instead of high volume, low volume, synchronous, metachronous, we had more sophisticated ways of categorizing our patients based on how the cancer was going to respond to an individual treatment. So we are not there yet. Uh, we have had these hints, like SPOP seems to really be associated with robust responses to abiraterone. Um, the luminal basal story has been very interesting. Breast cancer, of course, years ahead of us with that. Uh, but the problem with our luminal basal, so the basal subtype doesn't seem to benefit really well from ARPI or chemo, so we don't really have a good tool for those patients. So we're not there yet for molecular stratification, but there is one that is making its way and may become clinically useful in this setting, and that is Decipher. So you all know Decipher from localized prostate cancer, where we use it when we're thinking about adjuvant radiation versus salvage or adding ADT to radiation. But at ESMO last year, there was a study presented looking at Decipher in metastatic prostate cancer. They uh, trained the samples on charted, which was ADT docetaxel, and then validated using Stampede. So patients with a high or low Decipher score all benefited from abiraterone, but patients with a low Decipher score did not seem to benefit from receiving docetaxel. Um, so this is maybe some, a step towards getting away from just high volume, low volume. We know there are well-behaving high volumes and, and really aggressive low volumes, right? That's a really gross categorization. This needs to be validated. It's actually being incorporated prospectively into several cooperative group trials, um, but it's just exciting to have something that's closer to the finish line to help us in our clinic with our metastatic patients. Um, so there are other big questions that we really need answered, and the cooperative groups are stepping up. Alliance is working on a trial for doublet plus minus docetaxel, right? That's the big unanswered question, or a big unanswered question. In SWOG, we kind of took a different approach. We thought there's this really great biomarker that's really cheap and really widely used and accessible, which is PSA. We know that if PSA doesn't nadir below 0.2, by about six to 12 months into treatment, that that patient is going to have a much shorter survival. And yet we don't know if we can do anything about it, right? So in the, at the same time, the CCTG group was thinking along the same lines. So we merged our efforts and triple switch just opened January 31st. So if you're a CTEP site, I would encourage you to think about opening it. Very pragmatic design. Patients start their doublet therapy. If at somewhere around month six, seven, they have not achieved a PSA nadir less than 0.2, they're randomly assigned to get docetaxel or just do what we would do normally, which is keep them on their doublet, even though we know they're not gonna do as well. 
So I think this will be a really um, exciting trial, and I think patients will really like the idea that we're not treating everyone the same. We're going to see, do you respond well to your hormone therapy or not? And if not, we're going to try to goose it a little bit with chemotherapy, although we don't know if that will be helpful. We, we hope it will be. So the primary endpoint will be overall survival. And as I mentioned, there are lots of ongoing triplet trials, and I think we should support as many of them as, as are rational and, and available to us. There are PARP inhibitor trials. There's a lutetium PSMA. Um, there have been some negative trials, mostly unselected trials, like the Pembrolizumab Keynote 991, the abemacyclib Cyclone 3. Um, so molecular selection may be a strategy to get more positive phase three trials in this space. And in fact, Capitello 281 um, had a, a press release for a positive primary endpoint of RPFS. So that's pretty exciting. So Cap Capitello 281 is testing capivacertib, which is an inhibitor of the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. We know that this pathway is upregulated when we suppress androgen receptor signaling, but even more so when there's a P10 deletion. And so um, this is a, a newer drug. There was an older drug called ipatacertib that was tested in MCRPC um, as uh, abiraterone plus minus ipatacertib, but it was an all-comers trial, and the trial was negative. But when they analyzed by the NGS, they found that the patients with P10 deletion might have benefited. So the capivacertib trial has benefited from that knowledge. Um, there was a sort of no signal negative trial uh, with enzyme capivacertib. This phase three is in hormone sensitive. It's with abiraterone. It's selected for P10 deletion. So lots of reasons why this outcome is different, but we have to wait to see the data. All we have is the press release right now. The PSMA edition trial finished accrual over a year ago. We're all anxiously awaiting this. This is lutetium PSMA. We've seen how much it helps our patients with CRPC. Uh, we're hoping it'll move before docetaxel, but could it be even better in hormone sensitive? I do have my hesitations. You know, we're using the same criteria, the vision criteria, which we know are not so stringent. We know the more PSMA expression there is, the bigger the benefit from this agent. Should we have used a different criteria? Um, the dosing is the same, but we know hormone-sensitive prostate cancer is not as proliferative. It's a different biology. It's probably lower volume than the burdens we're treating in CRPC, and yet we're using the exact same dosing and dosing strategy. So I have some concerns, um, you know, but we will sort it out at the back end. Hopefully it's positive, and then we'll work out. You know, a lot of us talk about adaptive dosing as a, a future um, investigation that needs to happen. Also, these patients live a lot longer than our CRPC patients, and we'll really have to look out for late toxicities. Um, we haven't seen them. It's been really great. The lutetium PSMA data have been very clean. We're not seeing a signal of second malignancies. Um, some question about late GU toxicity, but in these patients who could have, you know, five, 10 years of survival, we'll really have to consider that when we're looking at the risk and benefit. Talipro-3 is testing uh, talazoparib with enzalutamide for metastatic hormone sensitive in patients who have an HR alteration, which does seem to be the population that benefits most. Um, the genes that qualify a patient are listed here. Um, again, I have a little bit of uh, hesitation. You know, we're using continuous talazoparib, which means these patients could be exposed to it for a lot longer. So far, these PARP inhibitors have been very, very safe. There was one MDS in Talipro 2, one leukemia. Um, but when we're treating patients for many more months or years, this is something we'll have to be looking out for. And I sort of like, in the metastatic hormone sensitive space, more of a concept of induction and maintenance, which is what we do with the triplet with docetaxel. So maybe room for other designs. So in conclusion, uh, right now we use a lot of doublet therapy and selectively triplet, especially for synchronous high volume. Um, the choice between using the CYP17 like abiraterone or an AR antagonist is really based on comorbidities and, and uh, you know, our sense of a, a patient's tolerance, but there are some interesting data to be presented at GUASCO in, in just a couple days, so stay tuned. Um, 
Again, I think we need more data about radiation in the prostate primary, so please support SAT No. 2. SimCap is another trial that's looking at the question of cytoreductive prostatectomy, and this is something patients want and patients ask about. So supporting these trials, not doing cytoreductive prostatectomy outside of trial, these are all things we can do to help get the answers. Um, and in the future, hopefully, we'll have more rational molecular selection, and we definitely need to pay some attention to deintensification so that we can try to balance risk and benefit in treating these patients. Thank you.